It really is wonderful that we have the Devil's Playbook on how they will mess with us while we pray. Knowing what they are up to can help us to counter their efforts. Prayer in general is a bit of a minefield for the demonic forces, but they are not completely helpless here as Screwtape explains. The fourth of the Screwtape letters is about the specific tactics and the traps that the devils use to get the focus of our prayers from God onto something else. The letter begins like this. My dear Wormwood, the amateurish suggestions in your last letter warn me that it is high time for me to write to you fully on the painful subject of prayer. You might have spared the comment that my advice about his prayers for his mother proved singularly unfortunate. That is not the sort of thing that a nephew should write to his uncle, nor a junior tempter to the undersecretary of a department. You may recall that in the last letter, Screwtape instructed Wormwood how to make the patient's prayers for his mother innocuous. Apparently, Wormwood's attempt to manipulate the patient's prayers were less than successful. And apparently, Wormwood is suggesting that his uncle may have steered him wrong. Wormwood's patient is a recent convert to Christianity, so he doesn't know much about prayer yet. He may remember the rote prayers of his childhood, though. What Wormwood needs to do is get the patient to react against those parrot-like kinds of prayers, and to pray in a much different way. The patient probably figures it's bad form to pray like a kid. He may be persuaded to aim at something entirely spontaneous, inward, informal, and unregularized, and what this will actually mean to a beginner will be an effort to produce in himself a vaguely devotional mood, in which real concentration of will and intelligence have no part. To put it another way, freestyle prayer in the hands of immature Christians will disengage intention and reason from the act of prayer. The focus will not be on God, but on feelings. Screwtape says that clever and lazy Christians can be led to pray like this for a long time before they smarten up. In general, we ought not to be winging it when we are praying. Especially when we are inexperienced, we see this in everything. You need to learn your scales before you can write music. You need to read a thousand poems before you can think about writing one. I've said this before, my dad is an incredible prayer. And so when he prays off the cuff, it's never really off the cuff. So pray the Psalms. Pray from the Book of Common Prayer. Buy a book that has set prayers, written for certain occasions or situations or times in life. I bet this is freaking out a lot of North American evangelicals because it goes against our love for freedom and our notions of the spiritual. But keep in mind, the devils want the inexperienced to pray spontaneously and be inwardly focused because then it's so easy to turn our thoughts from God to our own feelings. Here's another very interesting thing about prayer that we Westerners fail to understand. Our culture has so long believed that our body and our soul are separate entities. And we can't imagine that what we do with our bodies affects our souls, or vice versa. Screwtape observes that humans can be persuaded that the bodily position makes no difference to their prayers, for they constantly forget what you must always remember, that they are animals and that whatever their bodies do affects their souls. At times it is a very good idea to pray with your eyes open and with your hands unfolded when you are driving, for instance. But if the devils don't want us to pray on our knees with folded hands and closed eyes, well, maybe we should do that. Why pray with our body? Why fold our hands and close our eyes? The Sunday School answer is that it helps us to focus on God and not be distracted. And that's true. And it's a good reason. But there's another reason. It tells us something very important. Through our body, kneeling and folding and closing stops us from doing. When we stop doing, we can start just being. We submit to God and let him do the doing. Let him be in control. Kneeling and folding and closing is an act of surrender. And this is an appropriate emotional, intellectual, and spiritual posture for a conversation with our Creator. These are the things that our heart and mind and soul come to know and understand when we involve our bodies in our prayers. Again, this is the power of ritual shaping us through our bodies. So, if we seem determined to pray seriously, that's bad for the tempters. In these circumstances, Screwtape offers this advice to his nephew. If this fails, you must fall back on a subtler misdirection of his intention. Whenever they are attending to the enemy himself, we are defeated. But there are ways of preventing them from doing so. The simplest is to turn their gaze away from him towards themselves. Keep them watching their own minds and trying to produce feelings there by the action of their own wills. He gives some examples on how to do this. When the Christian is praying to be more loving, or have more courage, or to be forgiven, Screwtape says that the devils can shift our focus to trying to feel loving, to feel brave, and to feel forgiven. You see what they've done? They've turned our attention from God. We spend our time in prayer trying to manufacture feelings. And I love this part. Teach them to estimate the value of each prayer by their success in producing the desired feeling, and never let them suspect how much success or failure of that kind depends on whether they are well or ill. 
fresh or tired at the moment. But of course, the devils have other tactics. Screwtape talks about a subtler weapon. You see, we don't know what the demons can never forget. Screwtape explains. The humans do not start from that direct perception of him that we unhappily cannot avoid. They have never known that ghastly luminosity, that stabbing and searing glare which makes the background of permanent pain to our lives. If you look into your patient's mind when he is praying, you will not find that. If you examine the object to which he is attending, you will find that it is a composite object containing many quite ridiculous ingredients. Because we don't have a direct experience with God, we sort of naturally create our own idea about who or what we are praying to. And these ideas and images don't come close to who God really is. The minions of hell want us to keep praying to this silly idea of God that we've concocted in our own imagination. The old man with a white beard, or some sort of glowing light, or the top left corner of the room. So how do we counter this ploy? Well, we need to make the distinction between this idea that we have of God, the thing that we've made, and the God who made us. It's hard not to have this construction of God in our heads, but knowing that it is not this to which we are really praying, but to the real God behind it, well, that's the thing that the devils dread. Once his thoughts and images have been flung aside, Side, or if retained, retained with a full recognition of their merely subjective nature, and the man trusts himself to the completely real, external, invisible presence, there with him in the room, and never knowable by him as he is known by it, why then it is that the incalculable may occur. Screwtape calls this real nakedness in prayer. Now maybe you feel a little bit discouraged by this, but Screwtape explains that God is not passive while we are on our knees. But of course the enemy will not meantime be idle. Wherever there is prayer, there is danger of his own immediate action. He is cynically indifferent to the dignity of his position and ours as pure spirits. And to human animals on their knees, he pours out self-knowledge in a quite shameless fashion. So it's not just us versus the devils in all this. God is close. He's right there with us when we pray. Our hands are still, and our eyes are closed, and we are passive. But he is not. We pray to an active God. And that's kind of a cool thought, isn't it? I think Scootape's last comment is really interesting and accurate. He tells Wormwood that he has to keep the patient away from what he calls real nakedness of the soul in prayer. You will be helped by the fact that humans themselves do not desire it as much as they suppose. There's such a thing as getting more than they bargain for. Your affectionate uncle, Screwtape. Thank you. And we will see you next time for Screwtape's fifth letter.